ever pondered the question, how does one truly acquire wealth? Today delve into the timeless wisdom of Wallace D. Wattles, author of The Science of Getting Rich. Chapter 1. The Right to be Rich. Wattles begins with a profound statement, everyone has the right to be rich. He asserts that desire for wealth is not a sign of greed, but a fundamental human need to fully express oneself. Moving on to chapter 2. There is a science of getting rich. Here, Wattles introduces the idea that wealth accumulation isn't a matter of luck or circumstance, but rather a precise science, a series of actions and thoughts that anyone can follow. Chapter 3. Is opportunity monopolized? Wattles refutes the notion that wealth is finite and only available to a select few. He argues that opportunities for wealth are infinite and accessible to all. In chapter 4, the first principle in the science of getting rich, Wattles presents the concept of a thinking substance from which all things originate. He states that our thoughts shape this substance, thus creating our financial reality. Chapter 5. Increasing life. Wattles suggests that people must seek to do more than merely survive. By continually striving to improve oneself and one's circumstances, one naturally attracts wealth. Chapter 6. How Riches Come to You. Here, Wattles explains that wealth comes as a direct result of specific actions. He emphasizes the importance of efficient, effective work and the power of visualizing one's goals. Chapter 7. Gratitude. Wattles stresses the importance of gratitude in the journey to wealth. He believes that expressing thankfulness aligns us with the positive flow of life, which results in prosperity. In Chapter 8. Thinking in a certain way, Wattles suggests that a specific way of thinking can lead to wealth. He encourages the reader to hold a clear and steady mental image of their riches. Chapter 9. How to use the will. Wattles teaches that willpower isn't about exerting force, but directing focus. The will should be used to keep the mind fixed on the vision of wealth. In Chapter 10, Further Use of the Will, Wattles explains that by focusing one's will on becoming rich, one can influence the thinking substance and manifest wealth. Chapter 11. Acting in the Certain Way. Wattles advises that thought alone isn't enough. One must also act in a certain way, in alignment with one's vision of wealth. Chapter 12. Efficient Action. Wattles emphasizes that action should be purposeful and efficient. He argues that frantic, unfocused activity isn't productive or conducive to wealth. Chapter 13. Getting into the Right Business. Wattles guides the reader in finding the right avenue for wealth creation. He advises choosing a business or profession in alignment with one's interests and skills. Chapter 14. The Impression of Increase. Wattles declares that everyone should aim to give an impression of increase. By adding value to others, one can attract more wealth. Chapter 15. The Advancing Man. Wattles concludes with the principle that those who advance in life, who continually seek improvement and progress, are the ones who get rich. In essence, the science of getting rich offers a blueprint for financial success, based not on economic trends or investment strategies, but on timeless principles of thought and action. It teaches that wealth is a product of one's mindset and approach to life. By thinking in a certain way, expressing gratitude, acting efficiently, and constantly seeking improvement, anyone can tap into the limitless opportunities for wealth that exist in the world.